Time now to go behind enemy lines presented by Windows 11. So pleased to be joined now by Travis Wingfield. He is a writer for MiamiDolphins.com and the host of the Drive Time Podcast with Travis Wingfield. Thanks so much for the time. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me on. I'm happy to be here. All right, Titans, Dolphins this Sunday at Nissan Stadium. The Dolphins were left for dead at the end of October at 1 and 7. But that football team has turned it around to get right back in the playoff race. Travis, what spurred this big comeback? You know, I think it actually began really the week before they began the winning streak and a loss to the Buffalo Bills when they held Josh Allen and the explosive Bills offense really down for about three quarters of that game and the fourth quarter kind of got away from them. But since that time, this defense has gotten after the quarterback. They've gotten back to creating takeaways. The third down defense has been stellar. All the hallmarks that made this team a 10 win team a season ago, you're seeing that here over the course of a six game winning streak. Says a lot about leadership in the locker room though that they could fight back from that. Who are those leaders that are sort of the backbone of this team? Well, it starts at the very top with head coach Brian Flores and his message of, you know, one meeting, one walkthrough, one practice, one play, one game at a time. And the team has really taken that approach. I think Jerome Baker, the Dolphins middle linebacker, has really kind of taken on that role. And on offense, quarterback Tua Tungavailoa has certainly taken on a leadership role with this offense. And coming back off the injury, he's been a big part of that run as well. Since Tungavailoa came back from the injury, he has played stellar football. What is he doing so much better, Travis? He's just highly efficient right now. The underneath passing game has been very accurate and staying on schedule to complement what was a good running game a couple weeks ago against the New York Jets. And also mixing in the explosive play with Jalen Waddle. He's found Mike Gesicki and Matt Collins, some of the big playmakers down the field for some deep explosive passing plays. So they've been on schedule and sprinkled in the explosive plays here and there to really complement that defense and special teams. Has wide receiver Jalen Waddle had a better rookie year than you even thought he would? He was pretty heavily involved back in training camp and made a bunch of plays back then as well. And so the anticipation and expectation was, I think, that he was going to be kind of the go-to guy in the offense, and he certainly developed into that. Do you think Mike Jasicki is one of the most underrated tight ends in the NFL? Yeah, he certainly is one of those big playmakers that can get down the field and, and really kind of play that big body receiver. You know, he's a tight end part of the time, slot receiver the other part of the time. So he plays a little bit of both of those two positions, but he's definitely kind of on track with those higher end producer tight ends in the NFL. Talk about Waddle being a great rookie. Jalen Phillips has been absolutely super rushing the passer. His strength, I guess his strength? Yeah, you could put it that way. That It's either that or his multiplicity. He can play inside or outside, but you watch him get his hands on guys sometimes, he can certainly run through them with that bull rush. And he already has the rookie record for Dolphin sacks, and he's been red hot during the winning streak. Dolphins have six players with three or more sacks. How are they creating the pressure? Is it a lot of blitz? Plenty of blitzing, yeah. The Dolphins have actually really incorporated their two safeties into the mix as far as blitzing goes with Javon Holland and Brandon Jones. A lot of the back end guys coming up, they can cover some of the Dolphins cornerbacks are really good in coverage as well. So they have a good mix of who's coming, who's not coming. And oftentimes it is those two young safeties. How has Xavier Howard played? I know about the Pro Bowl again, his third, but what kind of season is he at overall? The interceptions are down just a little bit because teams are mostly throwing away from him. He and Byron Jones work so well in tandem to really kind of lock down the outside of that Dolphins defense. But if you test him, you better be careful because he's going to find a way to get his hands in the ball. He's also incorporated a lot more fumble uh, production this season with a couple of times he's poked the ball out to really help the Dolphins win a couple of games this year. Travis, what has surprised you most about these Dolphins in 2021? Just the way they fought back. It, it looked early on like they weren't going to be able to get back to the same defense they displayed a season ago. The quarterback position with Tua and Brissett and the injuries, and they found a way to really correct a lot of the things that were plaguing them during that one and seven stretch there, and they've kind of gotten that turned around. So just the resiliency of this football team, I would say. Seems like they're having a lot of fun as well. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure you saw the Christian Wilkins celebration after he found a way into the end zone. They all kind of rally around that, making the big plays. It's all business when you're in the building and when you're talking about football, but they also have found a way to kind of have fun with it. Travis Wingfield, a writer for MiamiDolphins.com and the host of the Drive Time Podcast with Travis Wingfield. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks a lot. That's Behind Enemy Lines, presented by Windows 11.